Hello everyone, this is Jeremy here, bringing you another informative UiPath demo. On today's video, we will be covering two main topics. Uh, the first is how UiPath works with PeopleSoft, and the PeopleSoft instance we'll be using today is the cloud version. And the second is just demoing some of UiPath's new computer vision activities. And why? It's, it's mainly because this is a very hot topic, as I've worked with multiple organizations who've housed some of their applications, if not all, within a Citrix environment. And for those of you who are familiar with different RPA technologies, uh, you may be aware of the level of difficulty that it can have trying to access these objects, right, using these solutions. So uh, just quick notes before we get started. This is a demo. I will be running it in debug mode, uh, meaning that this is working very slow compared to what it would be in production, and that's so you can see what's going on. Also, I've turned on the highlight function, so throughout the demo, you'll notice a bright red box that'll pop up around the different elements that the bot's interacting with. This is to help you notice what the bot's actually touching. Um, uh, otherwise, the screen would just be flashing. It would be really hard to see what's actually going on. And again, uh, this is just for demos, so please don't critique me on how I've built it. If you're looking at the flowchart, you're familiar with variables. This is mainly just informative, just showing people uh, the technology and interacting with. So let's go ahead and get started. And so we'll go ahead and execute here, and you'll notice that the bot is popping up to PeopleSoft. It's logging in. I'll go ahead and maximize the window. You'll notice it didn't interrupt uh, the bot and how it's working. It's scrolling through, logging in. And one thing I wanted to call out here is you'll notice that the actual bot's going to interact with an object sort of where my mouse is. You won't see it right as soon as I click OK. And this just shows you that the bot, uh, when it's not working inside of Citrix, that it doesn't need to see these elements. It actually knows where it's at through the code and the website. And so it's going to interact here and you'll notice it. You see, and that was an object in the list. So the bot is more or less moving through this PeopleSoft instance, and in this case, it's going to add a new voucher, just as an example, so you can see it work. And I like to go ahead and show people, assume bots never mess up, right? But bots are only as good as the code that you build them with. So in this example, you'll see that the bot's making a correction, right? And just to demonstrate, it can type into these fields, it recognizes the labels, it can also use these menus, right? So just to show some additional functionality, We'll go ahead and move from vouchers to vendors, right? And watch the bot as it works through suppliers and makes the appropriate selection. And whether it's a tab or a type in field, the bot has no issues, you know, recognizing this, clicking buttons, making certain additions, whether it's text or any type of uh, data that needs to be entered into the website, there's no problem. And here you'll see it working through a pop-up box, same situation with no issues. Moving through approvals, again, just showing additional functionality. And here you'll notice this is actually an iframe. And so the bot, even though it's not able to actually identify these specific drop down menus, right, it still has no problems tabbing through and making the appropriate selection. So here you'll see it work through a specific payment that's pending approval. And as you'll notice here, the bot has actually prompted you for something to input. And so this can be used in any type of process, right? Maybe there's a situation where you want some additional you know, eyes on it and you want the bot to be supported by a person. Here's an example where you can stop a bot mid process and ask for an input. So here we'll go ahead and put approve. Now, uh, time for some more magic. We're going to go ahead and move from just interacting with the cloud-based version of PeopleSoft and show you guys it working within a Citrix environment while well, it's not where it's not able to actually integrate with some of these objects. So for that way I have the way I've simulated this here is I've created a VM instance of PeopleSoft, the same website, but I've created a, a VM instance that way the bot and the software is not housed on that PC making it simulate a Citrix environment. And you'll notice here that on the original instance of PeopleSoft, not in the cloud, it's easily able to identify the different labels, the different fields, the menu boxes, any of these components. But if I were to switch to the actual 
desktop, I uh, mean the Citrix version, right, that I have RDP'd in here and try the exact same components, you'll notice that it's not able to identify any of these, any of these components, right? So I can't easily tie them in here. And this demonstrates why it's very important to be able to use computer vision uh, given that many applications are housed inside of Citrix, the bot's not able to identify it. And that's why this demo that you're about to see as it moves through PeopleSoft is, is why this is going to have such a huge impact. So we'll go ahead and get started. So you'll see here I have the, the remote RDP session connected. The bot's looking for the user ID box and you'll notice that it was able to quickly read where the user ID label was. And, and it's using computer vision now, right? It's not actually connected to the website and the code in the background. It's literally reading my screen, the image on my screen and making the appropriate selections. You'll notice, see here, it's maneuvering through the exact same window. It's tabbing down, going through payables operations again. It's you know taking a snapshot of my screen and clicking the appropriate boxes. And this is an amazing um, upgrade and improvement to the way RPA softwares have worked in the past. Now you're getting more into your intelligent automation um, and, and being able to you know, automate applications. And here again, we're going and it's identifying, reading the screen, noticing that the supplier name has to be uh, selected. And of course, as you noticed, the bot was still able to maneuver. And yes, in a Citrix environment, it is still working. With that being said, that is the demo. And thank you for watching.